that block. Yeah, so there, there are limits in what can you say in the referendum, but you can limit the projects to the extent it can fit within those words. And the bond resolution that would typically get approved, assuming the referendum approves, would also have a project list that could be as strict as possible or as flexible as possible. So there is some limitations and some flexibility on how you can limit the so, projects. So that, 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 referen that referendum, um, the bond document would contain that language? Yeah, the bond document, the bond resolution that gets approved will typically have a project list in it. And if that project list would need to change, it would have to come back before the city commission to change that project list. So they would they would approve a referent a, a resolution. It would be incorporated in the bond document before the, the deal was inked and any money was exchanged. Exactly. Up front, a bond resolution is drafted. It talks about the specifics of the financing. The commission approves that. If the project list needed to change two years later, that would have to come back before the commission to modify the project list. But again, it, but again, it could only be used for infrastructure projects by those commissioners. In the infrastructure projects that are eligible for tax exempt financing. So that's typically the projects we've talked about here. Commissioner Zerny. Thank you. Uh, could that resolution be worded and drafted? prior to even going out for a vote? Uh, it, it, there's nothing that prohibits you from drafting that resolution. Obviously, there's typically a cost to doing that. A bond council typically, neighbors give them to draft that resolution. But yes, it could be drafted beforehand for the people to look at. Obviously, it could be modified at any time prior to the city commission approving it. But if we, we put that together, then we could go, this is really what we want to do. And what would the vote would be based on? We'd be held accountable to that if we could come up with the correct solution and allocations. And that could be that could be created, right? Yeah, I think what you could typically do is if you even approved a bond resolution up front that had the general specific mechanics of what you wanted to do. Typically, after the approval, you would come back with a supplemental resolution that supplements that and adds the specific details about when the sales are going to be and that type of thing, competitive versus negotiated. But the project list would be in the upfront master bond right, resolution. The project list with what groups of work would be in what areas for X dollars. And the maximum amount of bonds to be issued, maximum interest rates you could include, okay. maximum Thank term you. of the financing, and those types of things, yes. And I just wanted to state too, outside of, of that legalese, that um, there were some questions earlier, some comments about not having itemized projects. The, the, we had documentation, and, and we isolated and highlighted every single project, every single street, and the dollar values associated with those projects. So that work has already been done, and that was done a long time ago. So you can access that information. If you have any questions about it, just give me a call. I may not have been, I, I haven't heard so somebody ask, and the question I don't think was addressed. Let's say this happens what he just detailed. It does get approved, the project list is there, it's all a done deal. Four, six years from now, the guard changes. What assures, to, to calm some of these fears, that that project list that originally everybody, let's say they jumped on board and did vote and it passed, how solid is that? Is that written in stone like the Ten Commandments? Or can a, a later commission go and change it and say, I want to use this money for the isn't? It has to be for what that project list originally? Infrastructure. Infrastructure. You want to elaborate on that? I'm not sure. Technically, I think a future commission could modify the project list just as this commission could after the fact. So I'm not sure there's any way that the city commission could put a project list in place and somehow protect that from future commission action. Maybe the city attorney can address that. or And that's exactly what Mr. Rinaldi was asking, too, was saying that what happens, you know, down the road. I think that was a concern that was expressed by this commission too. But but keep in process. mind there's there's been talk about what if something changes 20 or 25 years from now. So it's really only when the project proceeds are available and being spent, which is probably five or six years. Once the project proceeds are spent, it's really just a matter of the city paying its debt services on an annual basis for that period of time. The projects obviously can't change after that. So it's not as if it's a 25 or 30 year problem. It's really a five or six year issue while the proceeds are available. Mr. Waples, do you have a question on the phasing of the, of the bond? Yes, as you're describing the phasing, where we're just kind of using some of the money as we go 
during the time. If, say, the tax revenue increases and we find out as we're going through our projects, and we don't need every month, every penny of the bond, do are we obligated to use that bond? Uh, that's a good question. Typically, when you do a publicly offered bond financing, you're going to draw down the entire amount of the proceeds up front. So if you did it in phasing for $60 million, just to make it simple, you might do 20 the first year, 20 the third year, and 20 the fifth year. So you're going to have those proceeds. To the extent they were not used, you could potentially repay the debt with that proceeds, thus lowering the burden. There are some restrictions on prepayment. Right. Typically, deals have a 10-year lockout where you can't prepay and things like that. And I'm more than happy to get in the weeds of that type of thing. But there are some limitations on optional prepayment. But in general, you could use additional proceeds. One, to prepay debt or potentially to make interest payments as well, thus lowering the millage levy on individual citizens. And in addition to that, I think one of the questions that you might have is, uh, so if it's in three phases, like we had laid it out in three phases, and you say, okay, 20, say we're doing it like you mentioned, 20, 20, and 20, right? If the grants came in, like I talked about the MPO and, and Battle Road, and that, and that was when it came in, I always said, if, if we get these grant monies in or whatever, we don't go to the next phase. It's possible still in phases to not have to go through phase two or phase three. Yeah, technically the referendum would approve a not to exceed bonding amount, and if for some reason in the future it was determined we didn't need those projects or had alternative proceeds, you're not forced to issue those bonds. So yeah, there is flexibility to not issue up to the full amount. Um, that referendum, you know, I, I'm sure you could put wording in there as to how quickly you need to issue bonds and that type of thing to limit yourself, but there's nothing that requires you to issue the full amount once the referendum is passed. Thank you. Yes, Elise? Now, one of the concerns, and, and I know you touched on it, you said if property values go down, then the millage goes up to repay the bonds. I think one of the things that concerns me about general obligation versus special assessment is that the general obligation, every homeowner, every business is just writing a blank check. Whatever the market does over 30 years, the city has got to make that payment, and our repayment isn't fixed. So it can just go up and up and up and up. If there's another bubble and values crash, then we still have to make that repayment. But with a special assessment, you come to me and you say, hey, your property is going to pay X many dollars per year for X many years, and it's a fixed amount. And I honestly don't know any financial planner who would tell me, yeah, go ahead and take that unknown. Your, your payment could be anything over 30, 35 years versus here's a fixed amount. I'd gladly take the fixed amount and set even at a higher interest rate than that big question mark because 30, 35 years is a heck of a long time to expect that property values are going to do nothing to go up. It's never happened. We're going to have another bubble. There's going to be all kinds of dips. And who's going to get hurt? Well, all of us. And it's our property on the line. Not something you can, you know, not your car. You can sell it or, you know, it's your home. Well, we kind of touched on it. We well, you did, but I'm not sure yeah. people really get it that, that, you know, you keep talking about all these great interest rates, but you're putting your home on the line. And the city on a general obligation bond is saying, we will make this payment no matter what. No matter what we have to do, we'll make it. No matter how much we have to charge our, our residents, we'll make that payment. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that was a question. It was a statement, and it's an accurate statement. I mean, to the extent the ad valorem assessed value of the city goes up and down, that millage impact will be affected. So, obviously, in a rising ad valorem assessed value situation, that millage impact will go down over time. But the opposite is true. In a declining ad valorem situation, uh, the millage impact would go up for each individual property owner. I mean, that's, that's an accurate statement, yes. And again, it was in the phasing process, though. It wasn't $63 million that you're going to bond all at the same time. It was in three phases. Right. So you could stop in the middle of it. now there's a bubble and it bursts. But you could stop after, you, you could stop after phase one, which is just a couple of years. You don't have, that. no, that's what I was trying to explain. That was a whole part of the whole 2020, too. You could stop at any point. You don't have to borrow the whole 63. That's just authorizing that if you should get, if you should need to do that. Why don't you ask for maybe 20, let us all see how that pans out, and then come back and ask for 20, as opposed to asking for 60, and we'll hope. You know, because I tell you, if you gave me 60 million, I'd 
be figuring out how to stand Why don't you listen to what we're saying? I don't, I don't quite <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> um, oh, come on. I'm sorry, boy, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. It, it concerns, I mean, I'm glad everyone came out. Um, I happen to have agreed with some of the comments that were made that I'm not sure that it was the wisest thing to restrict the meeting to looking only at the financing. I think it was more important, and we got into it a little bit with some of the folks, to understand why for a problem that seems to have a lot of recognition, a lot of people would like to have our roads better, why is it that we only had a 50-50 vote on it? And I think we've heard some of the pieces that there was a question of trust, there was a question of what is the benefit? Ms. Latour raised the issue that, you know, when you move to Lake Worth, and people say, well, why'd you move to Lake Worth? There is a certain amount of that, but people don't, in general, say, you know, why'd you move to Lake Worth? The roads are terrible. There are other issues, and you raise crime and blight. And so if our objective as a commission is to raise property values in the city, which I think there's a fair amount of, of support for, we should probably be thinking, is putting money into roads the best way to do that? Oh. Is perhaps, I'll tell you, you know, I, I, I'm out quite a bit, and we've done, what, 13, 14, 15 demolitions. I see that many on a few roads, houses that are in bad shape. We are doing a woefully inadequate job of addressing the, the crime and blight. I'm sending in pictures okay. all the time. Can we keep we are, this to the bond, to the yes. fight in the office? No, no I, really, this is not campaign time, please. It's not about campaigning. This is about our community and making sure that we listen thoroughly and openly to what broadly people think it takes to pull this community up. We put out a hypothesis two years ago that if we fix the roads, everything's going to get better. That was a hypothesis. We heard from the county appraiser, gentleman came once, and said, well, actually, that doesn't really have much influence on property values. That's not uh, exactly so Can we Can we that, just stick with is, this is, issue? Commissioner uh, McBoy, please. No, I will not be closed out. What? I speak for a lot of people, and I, have, I, I haven't what? said anything till now. What's that about what? This is a uh, great meeting, and you're just putting a damper on it, Commissioner. It we, are, we are listening. That's what this whole meeting is about. We are listening, and I won't have you pass judgment on us, commissioners up here. We're trying to create solutions in their may practice. May I finish my comments? Are they going to be about financing? They certainly are. Okay, let's talk about financing. It bothers me quite a bit that in the course of meetings on presenting the bond to the community, we were repeatedly told that you could not do a special assessment. And now, after the election, six months later, we're being told that, yes, you definitely can do special assessments. Why are we hearing that at this point? I'm hearing that there are some challenges with doing it. Some of you who have been here a while will remember that when we worked on the stormwater things, we paid a contract to a consulting firm, I believe it was about 100,000, 130,000, to do exactly that work that was specified that it's difficult. It is difficult. That, that consulting firm went through for our stormwater assessment and went through every property and followed the methodology. Things that are difficult, a statement that something is difficult is not really very helpful. Put a price tag on it. If we're trying to finance $20 million and difficult means it would cost us $100,000 of somebody painstakingly going through and doing some sort of a procedure, that's the cost of doing business. It doesn't matter that it's difficult or painstaking. Can it be done? What does it cost to do it? If it's legally impossible, that's a whole different thing. I would like an answer from the city attorney because I heard something also very interesting that I raised repeatedly when we were bringing up the bond. Why can we not tell people in very clear terms what they're going to get for the money that they're borrowing? And I hope I've heard things that, well, you know, that'll be specified in the bond covenant, and that's expensive, and you don't do that 